Kicking is key for creating and sustaining speed in backstroke. Doing so requires not just fitness of the legs, but also great skill in kicking on the back. And unfortunately, if swimmers are performing all or most of their kick training on their stomach, this can lead to shortcomings in both skill and fitness. In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite strategy for developing fit and skilled backstroke legs. Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. And as always, I'm going to keep things simple, describe a common challenge, and show you one of my favorite solutions to overcoming that challenge. Let's dive in. So the legs are the glue in backstroke. And if someone's effective at backstroke, I can almost guarantee that they're using a six-beat kick. Effective and sustained kicking is critical in backstroke. If the legs go, the swimmer is going to be in big trouble that last quarter of the race. Kicking is so important for three big reasons. First of all, it creates propulsion. The kick contributes propulsion, and every little bit is going to add up to faster swimming. The legs go, that's that much less propulsion that they're creating, and they're going to swim that much slower. Second, the kick is also really helpful for shifting the body from side to side when swimmers rotate. And because the backstroke rotation tends to be both fast and violent, the kick can be really useful and really helpful for facilitating that fast shift in less time and with less effort. Lastly, the legs are important for body position. When swimmers pull, that tends to have a sinking effect on the hips, and by kicking, the legs can counteract that effect. If the legs go, that sinking effect is going to be more prominent. It's going to ruin body position. They're going to get even more tired, and everything's just going to fall apart. So for all these reasons, the legs are the glue, and swimmers have to be both effective at kicking, and they have to be able to sustain their kicking in order to create and maintain speed throughout their entire race. While both freestyle and backstroke use flutter kick, backstroke kicking, kicking on the back, is not the same as kicking on the stomach. On the stomach, the recovery kick is working at the surface of the water, and sometimes it's even breaking the surface of the water, whereas on the back, the recovery kick is working against the resistance of the water. And the deeper the leg goes, the worse that gets. Secondly, a straight recovery, a straight up kick, is critical for an effective whip kick that doesn't create much resistance. If swimmers are bending the knees or just letting the feet drop to recover the legs, they're going to be creating more resistance and they're going to execute a much less effective kick. And recovering the leg straight puts more pressure on the muscles of the back of the leg. And with the recovery kick working against the resistance of the water, coupled with the straighter leg recovery, there's going to be a lot more pressure on the backs of the legs. And if that's not addressed, it's going to lead to a lot of fatigue at the end of races. So if we watch this swimmer here, what we'll be able to see is that the leg recovers straight and that facilitates a whipping action that really creates a ton of propulsion. So if we watch the leg in the back here, you can see it recovers straight down. And then when the thigh reverses, the knee bends and then it whips back up right to the surface. Again, we watch this kick here, recovering straight down. The leg starts moving forward, that bends the knee and then it whips up to the surface. And then boom, right there, the end of the kick, you can see it flick up to the surface of the water. And that whipping action is going to be facilitated by recovering the legs straight. If the legs are bending on the recovery, that's not going to set up the action that we want. And by recovering the legs straight, it's putting a lot more pressure on the muscles of the back of the leg, which need to be trained. So again, we watch one more time here. The legs recovering straight down, and then the kick reverses. Then the knee bends, and then that whip travels down through the foot all the way up to the surface of the water where he just flicks it right through there and that's going to create a ton of propulsion. So recovering with relatively straight legs is critical for whipping that kick, but we have to train those muscles. We have to train that skill if we want it to show up in races. So what happens if backstrokers in particular only use a board to kick? This isn't a knock on kicking with a board because kickboards are obviously effective for developing the kick and it can improve flutter kicking in both freestyle and backstroke. However, Kickboards do undertrain the back of the legs because there's less stress on the up kick. And that can be a problem because balance between the front of the leg and the back of the leg can be critical for effective kicking. And this is certainly true of backstroke where the up kick is going to get stressed a lot more due to the position of the body and due to the skill of kicking, which involves a much straighter up kick, which is going to further challenge the muscles of the back of the legs. And so if swimmers are only using a board to develop their kick, especially as backstrokers, they're going to get in trouble because that skill is not going to be developed. They're not going to be as effective at creating speed. And just as importantly, they're not going to have the fitness and the muscles that matter in order to maintain that kick throughout the entire race. The simple and easy solution is have swimmers kick on their back, especially in streamline. It keeps the arms out of the action. It allows them to work the kick and it puts more pressure on the up kick. 
So performing at least some of the swimmer's training on their back and streamline can be a really effective way to develop this skill and train the muscles responsible for executing that skill. So by flutter kicking on the back, swimmers are going to train the kick like they'll actually use it while swimming. They'll train the muscles for the job at hand, and they'll improve the skill of kicking. And that's ultimately what we want. So one of the reasons that coaches like boards is because it allows for them to isolate the legs. And that's certainly an important reason you can accomplish the same thing by having swimmers go on streamline. They can't cheat. They can't use the arms. They have to be effective at creating speed with the legs. And by kicking in this way, there's going to be a lot more stress on the back of the legs. You're going to develop a more symmetrical kick, even in freestyle. But more importantly, you're going to develop the up kick more effectively, which is really critical for fast backstroke swimming. Simply performing some of your kick training as flutter kick on the back is a huge first step, and that alone will make a huge difference. But if you want to make it more effective, there are some strategies you can use as well. So train the kick on the back at a variety of speeds. You can use it for speed stuff. You can use it for racing type work. You can use it for a longer aerobic work. You can use it on anything in between, and you can use it at multiple intensities and speeds at the same time. Add resistance. You can resist the body with a parachute, with a cord, with a pulley system. You can also resist the feet with something like drag socks. That can be really effective as well. And then finally, perform kick swim sets so that swimmers have to learn how to execute their kick and maintain their kick while they're getting tired. So if you really want to develop the skill of kicking and the fitness of kicking and learning how to use it when they swim, these are three really powerful ways to get more out of your flutter kicking on the back. So here are a couple sets that put these ideas together. First set, they're going to go three rounds through. They're going to go 450s flutter kick on the back with drag socks. They are fast, so they've got to be on the back, and they've got to overcome the resistance of the socks. Then they're going to go four rounds of 50 flutter kick on the back, descend one to four, right into a 25 backstroke fast. So the legs are going to get more and more tired, and they still have to create speed on that 25 backstroke. Next set is a little bit more of an endurance set. They're going to go three rounds through. They're going to go 475s. It's 50 flutter kick on the back plus 25 backstroke. The 50s are to send one to four, and they're going to build each 25 to strong. So the purpose with that is get the legs a little bit tired, and then they have to and they have to finish each 75 really, really well with tired legs while swimming backstroke. Then three 100s is 25 flutter kick, 25 backstroke, to send one to three. So again, creating some fatigue with the kick, and then swimmers have to maintain that kick while they swim, get faster as they go, and then finish it off with a 50 backstroke strong effort just to put everything together with a little bit more speed. By challenging swimmers in various ways while flutter kicking on the back, we can build a more skilled and more robust backstroke flutter kick. If you want to know more about how elite swimmers create propulsion with their legs and backstroke, check out the video below.